While some teams have managed to time their World Cup campaigns to perfection, the Wallabies have played roulette with theirs. Australian fans had this quiet confidence under coach Dave Rennie on the back of a huge lift in performance in the Autumn Nation series where the Wallabies, depleted as they were, somehow managed to compete in every game. Just to spice things up though, Eddie Jones was appointed as the head coach and the roller coasters well and truly in full swing. So let's take a look at their chances of actually winning this thing. The Wallabies find themselves in a challenging pool. Not in the sense of toughest competition the tournament has to offer, but the most equally weighted pool with Wales, Fiji and Georgia all sequentially sitting next to each other in the world rankings. Portugal are sitting a little further back in the rankings, but have been impressive in their lead up to the World Cup. Every game throughout the pool stage will be of high importance for the Wallabies, and they'll be starting off with three competitive games back to back before a final pool game against Portugal. There's been plenty of talking points out of the Wallabies camp in recent weeks. My favourite though is Eddie Jones telling the Australian reporters to give themselves uppercuts. They're Australian mate. Yeah. Right? Uh, forget it boys. Alright, good luck. You're gonna give yourself uppercuts boys. Besides this, Eddie Jones has named a really raw Wallaby squad with a significant injection of youth. 16 of the 33 man squad have less than 10 international caps for the Wallabies. And I'm sure everyone's heard by now the omissions of Michael Hooper and Quade Cooper from the squad. I just want to say that I will be shocked, absolutely shocked, if neither Michael Hooper or Quade Cooper end up featuring in this World Cup. I have a feeling there may be some smoking mirrors and a little more than meets the eye from Eddie Jones. The other big talking point is there's only two known fly halves named in the entire squad. With four test veteran Carter Gordon, the main man, backed up by two test veteran Ben Donaldson. All jokes aside, it's an extremely risky move by Eddie Jones. This was their latest lineup against the All Blacks. Eddie Jones has seemed pretty set on the back line with the best forward pack yet to be confirmed. They'll be captained by the enormous behemoth of a man, Will Skelton, backed up by scrum half Tate McDermott in his absence. If we're looking at their form, nobody lost to the Wallabies in the rugby championship as they've been in a massive form slump lately, winning only two of their last 12 test matches. And talking about their playstyle, well, they're still reshaping their identity and playstyle under Eddie Jones. During his first game in charge of the Wallabies, it looked something similar to the game plan he used when England went on that crazy winning streak. It took all but 80 minutes for Eddie Jones to realize we just don't have the kicking prowess in the team to play that style of rugby. Since then, we've seen the Wallabies wanting to play an opportunistic attacking style of footy constantly aiming to mix up the point of attack on the back of front foot ball from big forwards. They tend to play a real jamming style of defense, looking to shut down long balls. A successful jackal has become somewhat of a rare sight for the Wallabies, which leads to long defensive periods. However, it's their ill discipline that has become a part of the Wallabies DNA, which they just can't seem to shake. The most penalized and carded team in 2022, which has continued on to 2023. If you haven't watched the Wallabies in a while, keep your eyes out for probing wingers Mark Nwangani Tawasi and Marika Korombedi, who can really test the integrity of the defensive line. Also in the forwards, they have some pretty damaging ball runners. Angus Bell, Will Skelton and Rob Valentini can all provide that front foot ball over the advantage line on most of their carries. My overall prediction for the Wallabies campaign, this is an inexperienced team with honestly nothing to lose which can make them extremely dangerous and pretty unreliable. As much as I want to say the Wallabies will win this World Cup, realistically, I think they'll make it to the quarterfinals at best, which will likely be against England. The potential's there, but the experience and identity just hasn't formed yet. Go down and check out the comments section. People always add a lot of insight into my videos. This video is part of my mini series here on YouTube that's previewing all the teams I take an interest in leading up to the World Cup. Check out my playlist on YouTube as it really helps the channel and thanks for watching. Take